most successful people in our society at all levels are those who know and who are known by the greatest number of other successful people. And this is a chicken and egg situation. Do people become successful and then meet other successful people? Or do they meet other successful people and then become successful themselves? The fact is that it can work either way. The mistake that most people make is that they think by seeking out uh, successful people they will be able to piggyback on their knowledge, advice and resources. But this will only work for a short time. In the long run you can never get and hold on to anything to which you are not entitled to as the result of your own consciousness and your own mind. The law of attraction is the most vital of all the luck factors. You inevitably attract into your life the people and circumstances in harmony with your dominant thoughts. The opposite of the law of attraction is the law of repulsion. You automatically push away or repel people and circumstances that are not in harmony with your dominant thoughts. When you are a completely positive thinker, you set up a force field of positive energy that attracts other positive people and situations toward you. If you are a negative thinker, you set up a field of negative energy that drives these same forces away. Many people have transformed their lives in as little as a day by simply taking full control over their minds and disciplining themselves to think only about the things they want and to talk only about the directions in which they are going. The very act of writing down clear, specific goals, making plans for their accomplishment and then going to work on them every single day will change your thinking and will change the force field of energy around you almost instantly. Birds of a feather do flock together. People at similar levels of success in every enterprise or profession tend to be attracted to each other. And you cannot fake it for very long. This brings us to another important luck factor, the law of indirect effort. This law says that you get what you want with other people more often indirectly than directly. In fact, if you attempt to get other people to help you or cooperate with you directly, you'll often end up looking foolish and even drive those people away. But if you use the law of indirect effort, you will be amazed at how successful you can be. For example, if you want to have more friends, how do you use the law of indirect effort? It's simple. Concentrate on being a good friend to other people. Take an interest in other people. Ask them questions and listen to their answers. Practice empathy with them. Be concerned about their problems and their situations. Look for ways to help them, even if it's just being a friendly sounding board. The more you concentrate on being a good friend, the more friends you will have. You will attract people into your life like bees to honey. Do you want to impress other people? The worst way to do it is the direct way, by trying to impress them. The best way is the indirect way, by being impressed by other people. The more impressed you are with other people and their accomplishments, the more interested and impressed they will be in you. When you meet a new person, remember that everyone has done something that is noteworthy and impressive. Your job is to find it out. Ask people what they do. Ask people how they got into that particular field. Ask people how everything is going. If you listen carefully, people will tell you about both their current successes and their current problems. When a person mentions that they have just achieved something worthwhile, nod, smile, and congratulate them for their success. As Abraham Lincoln said, everybody likes a compliment. People love to be congratulated for things that they have accomplished. A very successful businessman I know made a habit of sending 10 telegrams every week to people he had met over the years. The telegrams contained a single word, congratulations. Over the years, he built up a network of men and women who really liked and respected him. They were always amazed that he had somehow known that they had accomplished something worthwhile and had acknowledged them with his telegram. When he was asked later on in life how he managed to be aware of the accomplishments of his friends, he said that he had no idea about what they were doing. He just knew that everybody is accomplishing something every day and every week. When you send them a message that says, congratulations, they will automatically apply that message to whatever situation in their life that has just worked out successfully for them. By using the law of indirect effort, you constantly look for ways to compliment and congratulate people on what they are doing, what they have accomplished, how they are dressed, 
the recent decisions they have made, or even the fact that they have lost a few pounds. In our society, one of the best compliments that you can give to anyone is, you look like you've lost weight. Even if it's not true, people always enjoy having someone notice, rightly or wrongly, that they have lost weight. Why? Because everyone wants to be physically attractive, and physical attractiveness is closely associated with being thin, trim, and fit. You can never go wrong complimenting somebody on how good they look. Do you want people to respect you? This is one of the deepest subconscious needs that we all have. They say that babies cry for it and grown men die for it. Almost everything you do is to earn the respect of the people you respect, or at least not to lose the respect of the people you respect. So, if you want people to respect you, you should respect them in advance. We've moved away from the era of the go-getter, and we are now in the era of the go-giver. This is why the great majority of underachievers and unhappy people are those who are waiting and trying to get something out before they put something in. But this is not for you. You know the law of sowing and reaping. You know that you get out what you put in. You also know that you cannot reap until you have sown. So, you just concentrate on sowing good thoughts, good ideas, and good feelings in your relationships with others. And you know, as a matter of universal law, that it will come back to you in the most remarkable ways. The law of giving, another key luck factor, says that the more you give of yourself without expectation of return, the more that will come back to you from the most unexpected sources. Many people make the mistake of thinking that their good should come back from the very people that they have been good to. But this very seldom happens. When you give of yourself freely and openly to someone else, either of your time, your money, or your emotions, that person will very seldom be the person who repays you in kind. Instead, you will be activating one of the greatest of the laws of the universe, the laws of attraction, and powers will be put in motion that will bring you the good that you need and desire, usually from a completely different source and at exactly the right time and place for you. Why should this happen? It's easy to understand. When you do something nice for another person, it raises your own self-esteem and makes you feel pretty terrific about yourself. There is something about helping others, about giving of yourself to others in need, that makes you glow as a person. In fact, you are constructed, engineered in such a way that you can only be truly happy when you know that you are doing something that really makes a positive difference in the lives of other people. The reality is that you benefit as much and often much more than the person for whom you do a kindness. You change the force field of mental energy around you by helping others in some way. In so doing, you intensify the power of attraction and draw into your life happy people and circumstances from sources that you could not even imagine or predict. For example, imagine you are driving from point A to point B. You're in a hurry, but you see an old person who is stopped by the side of the road with a flat tire. Even though you're on a tight schedule, you overcome your impatience, you stop and help the person replace their tire. The person offers to pay you and you refuse. You wish them Godspeed and you hurry along on your journey. The whole incident takes about 10 minutes. Perhaps unbeknownst to you, you have just activated the powers of the universe in your behalf. You arrive at your appointment a little bit late, but you find that the person you're going to meet with is even later than you. Nothing is lost. Not only that, something has happened that morning and the person you meet with, rather than being a reluctant prospect, is very much in need of what you're selling and makes an immediate decision to buy. You walk out with one of the best and easiest orders you ever got. And if you're not careful, you start thinking about how lucky you were. But it wasn't luck. It was law. Generosity of all kinds triggers happy, fortuitous, lucky events in your life. Throughout the ages, men and women have tithed their way to great success and fortune. They have regularly given 10% or more of their income to worthy causes. This attitude and action of giving seems to set up a force field of energy that draws financial opportunities to them that are far, far greater than any money they give away. When you give generously of yourself, you change your mental space. You shape the inner aspects of your mind. 
you create a new mental equivalent which is more and more consistent with the life experiences of satisfaction, joy and success that you desire. You become a truly lucky person.